Recently, I had an idea about a new project. One of the main features was gonna be an ability to draw or sketch stuff in a browser. Instead of doing that as a part of the project, I decided to do a separate one and publish it as an npm package that I could later use. And it could be useful for other people as well. Before doing anything, I needed to decide what I wanted that anything to be. I was gonna be working with React, so this new project has to be a library of React components slash hooks. I also wanted it to be very lightweight and depend on as few other libraries as possible. And it needed to be published to npm. In terms of functionality, there had to be a component that renders drawings into a canvas. I needed to allow drawing with the mouse and support multiple stroke widths and colors. Users also had to be able to pan and zoom. An undo button also seemed like a great idea. Even more than that, I thought it could be cool to save the complete drawing history, so I could make a playback animation of the drawing process. I also wanted touchscreen support. And of course, it had to be performant. I didn't want drawing to be laggy, that's like the worst thing. And finally, since the project was gonna be public, I wanted to work a bit on the code quality and documentation. Of course, there was a lot more stuff I could do, but that sounded like enough for the first version. I needed some sort of a plan, so I rearranged the requirements a bit for the most important features to go first. This way I knew where to begin. So I created a new project and installed Storybook for the testing. It could have been an overkill since I only needed a single story and I could probably set up a testing environment myself, but it was just a dev dependency so it didn't matter that much. First thing I did was I created a couple of interfaces to describe how the sketch had to look on the program. Basically, at that point, a sketch was just a collection of lines, where a line was defined by two points. And then I tried to draw it on the screen. So I made a new component that takes a sketch as a prop. It renders a single canvas, takes a ref to it, and then on every sketch update it draws every line of the sketch on the canvas. It didn't seem very optimized, but since performance wasn't my first priority, I just wanted to do the most naive implementation and do the optimization later. Then I could just make some lines with completely random coordinates and get this beautiful drawing. Then I wanted to be able to actually draw with the mouse. I made it so the mouse logic is encapsulated here and this component gets a single callback and props to notify its parent that the user is drawing. So I created a mouse state variable to remember the last mouse position and whether we're currently drawing. Then I could update the state on mouse up, mouse down and mouse move. If a button was pressed and the mouse was moving, I called the onUser draw callback. Now that I used the useRef hook instead of useState for the mouse state, I'm doing that because I don't need this component to be re-rendered every time the mouse moves. And when the callback was called, I just added a new line to the sketch. The result looked good, but a bit boring. I wanted colors. So I made another component for picking colors. It took a list of strings as color options and the current one, showed the options as a list and notified the parent when a user selected the color. I also needed a bit of styling. There is many options to do styles and I really like styled components, but I didn't want a dependency for a couple of classes, so I just used plain CSS modules that I could later pack into a single CSS file. And then I just made it so the lines could have colors, set the current color on draw and then used it as a stroke style when drawing to canvas. Making the stroke width changeable is pretty much the same. For some reason I called it thickness and I'm still not sure why. The lines looked a bit too edgy and weird. That was easily fixable by just setting the line cap to round. Much better. The next thing I wanted to do was an undo button. And that seemed pretty easy. I just created a button and every time it was clicked, I removed the last line from the drawing. And I also cleared the canvas on every sketch change. Should be good, right? Not really. At that point the sketch consisted of a lot of lines. And each line was like 2 pixels. So every time I pressed undo, I just removed a very tiny piece of drawing. And I wanted to remove a whole shape. And that meant I needed to modify sketch interfaces a bit. 
I made it so a sketch was still a collection of lines, but every line was a collection of segments. To populate it correctly, I needed to also track when a user starts and finishes drawing. And that is when a mouse button is pressed or unpressed. Then, on start drawing I created a new line, and on draw I just added new segments to the last line in the sketch. That made the undo button much more useful. My next step was to implement panning. Let's talk about it for a second. Let's say that this is our canvas, and this is the sketch, which is moved or panned a bit to the right and down. We can call this point the pan point, and it has coordinates of xp and yp. Basically, it just describes how much and what direction the sketch is moved relative to the canvas. Then, for every point on the sketch with coordinates of x and y, we need to calculate its new coordinates x' prime and y' prime on the canvas. It's pretty easy to see that it can be done just by adding pan point coordinates to the point coordinates within the sketch. So I added a new prop called pan to the canvas component, that is that pan point we just talked about. I also made a new function that returned the point with x and y as sums of x's and y's of two points. And then on every canvas draw, I applied it to every point on the sketch and the pan point. To test it, I added a couple of sliders and it kind of worked. Until I tried to draw again. The problem was that when I sent the points in on user draw callback, they were in the canvas coordinate system and I needed to convert them to the sketch coordinate system. To do this, I just needed to subtract pan coordinates from the point instead of adding them. So I made two new functions to add and subtract points. And then on sketch render I added the pan to every point of the sketch and on mouse move I subtracted the pan from every point of the mouse positions. Then I could pan and draw at the same time. At that point I noticed that I somehow forgot to check which mouse button is pressed in event listeners. To fix it, I created a couple of constants and made sure drawing only happens on left mouse button. After that I needed to do panning with mouse instead of sliders. So I added a new callback to the canvas component props and started to track middle mouse button as well. And then I called the on user pen callback whenever a mouse moved with the button pressed. With that, I updated pan coordinates based on mouse movement. Then we could pan just by dragging the sketch with the middle mouse button. With panning done, I needed to limit the drawing area. So I drew a big gray square and a small white square inside as a mark of a drawing borders. And then I used the context clip method to actually hide everything outside of it. And since the drawing area was limited, I thought it was a good idea to limit panning as well so we couldn't go too far from the sketch. Looks like we did quite a good job and that should be enough for the first video. I think in the next one we'll look at the zoom and touchscreen support. Thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you again.